Happy New Year, everybody. I think the best way to formally inaugurate that new year here at Pondering Politics is for me to briefly set aside my natural cynicism to talk with you about some genuinely good news, because there is indeed good news to be found. Found actually in one of the least likely places imaginable, which almost makes that good news even better. That good news is the economy, and the place that it's being talked about, which may surprise you, is the Fox Propaganda Network. But before we unpack all that, if you haven't yet, please hit that like, subscribe, and the alert bell. All right, friends, we have several clips to look at, but before we play any of them, I want to begin with a disclaimer I typically use when I talk about the economy. We live, whether we like it or not, in a capitalist system, and that means that there are going to be, in a country the size of the United States, 340 million people, 50 states, tens or hundreds of thousands or millions of people who experience legitimate financial hardship, and that's real. And we shouldn't marginalize it, we shouldn't discount it, we shouldn't pretend it doesn't exist, because I would argue we all have a moral imperative to try to get that number to zero, or as close to zero as possible. And yet, the major macroeconomic indicators that we've always used to evaluate iterations of the American economy are what they are, and they tell us, whether we believe it or not, all things considered, the economy under President Biden is actually pretty damn good. And if you don't believe me, let's talk to Jared Bernstein. Jared Bernstein is uh, President Biden's top economic advisor, and he's also really good at delivering facts and figures to hostile audiences because he frequently visits the Fox Propaganda Network. And on his most recent or in his most recent appearance, he had basically a minute and a half of uninterrupted airtime to deliver some surprising economic wins that the Fox audience certainly doesn't hear about. And so let's play the clip and we'll unpack them together. Well, I think on New Year's Day, a good place to start is uh, let's look at what folks were saying uh, last New Year's at the beginning of this year. <clears throat> you had most financial outlets and many economists assuring us that a recession was inevitable mm -hmm. and uh, that the unemployment rate would have to rise many points in order to get inflation down. Uh, go back a year and a half and the price of gas was, no was north of $5 a gallon. Today, as I sit and talk to you on New Year's Eve day, there is is no recession. Uh, unemployment has been below 4% for 22 months in a row. The price of gas this morning was $3.11 on average across the nation and below $3 a gallon in 28 states. Now, this combination of lowering inflation, and inflation is on a solid glide path back to its pre-pandemic pre rate, this combination of tight labor markets and easing prices has led to real wage gains. On a yearly basis, wages for mid-level workers have been beating prices for nine months in a row. That's a trend, Mike, not okay. a blip. Now, you reasonably ask, why isn't that uh, reaching more Americans? Well, if we look at our two most closely watched measures of consumer uh, sentiment, consumer confidence. They both rose big time in uh, December. One was up 10 percent, the other a whopping 14 percent. Now, that's one month. That's not yet a trend. But it's certainly suggestive that the measures that this president is taking to help provide support and relief to families like the one he grew up in are working and that people are starting to feel it. So again, Bernstein's really good at what he does. He, he's a frequent guest on the Fox Propaganda Network. He's used to delivering, again, these news or this news to a tough audience and to tough hosts, right? And typically what happens is uh, whoever he's uh, being interviewed by will typically hit him with an example of somebody who is experiencing legitimate financial hardship. And you can tell, like, the goal is to try to intimidate Bernstein into not you know, clinging to the facts, basically like, listen, are you going to be so insensitive to talk about historically low unemployment and real wage gains and all these great macroeconomic indicators when I just showed you uh, a video clip or a TikTok uh, clip of a person who's having a mental breakdown because of their legitimate financial woes? And Bernstein is so good because he acknowledges the pain. He doesn't, you know, uh, pretend it doesn't exist. He doesn't say, ah, you know, that's an anecdote. Anecdotes don't count. He actually addresses these things head, head on. And he says there's much more work to be done. Things are going in the right direction. We need to persuasively convey the facts to people. But we also have to acknowledge there's still more work to be done, which is probably why you should vote for either President Biden or at least the Democrats in general and whoever the Democratic nominee is, which at this moment will be President Biden or is President Biden, uh, so that the you know, the the trajectory that's going in a positive direction can continue. But he doesn't forfeit 
the facts, the ground that Democrats enjoy on these macroeconomic indicators. And all that's great. In 2024, which is where we are right now, is going to be a choice, right? It's going to be a choice between President Biden or the Democratic nominee or Donald Trump and the Republican nominee. You have a choice between two individuals who represent two parties and two different approaches to things like the economy or social issues. But obviously, this particular episode is about the economy. And as great as that clip was on the Fox Propaganda Network, you also have the rest of the Fox Propaganda Network, and they indulge in a degree of revisionist history uh, about the Trump economy, right? They, they say, of course you have a choice. You know, again, 2024 is Biden v. Trump, the rematch. Let's talk about all the great things that the Trump economy did. But they, I would argue, don't really have the facts on their side. So let's play a couple of the clips in question, and again, we'll unpack them together. Because all of that other stuff is just a, a distraction. Right now, voters miss the American dream, and the only hope to get that back to reality is President Trump by looking at those polls. And you just take a look. What has Donald Trump done? We've seen what he's done in his four years. Compare that to what President Biden has done. Under Trump, we had a thriving economy. We were energy independent. We had some semblance of organization at the border. And, you know, look at the Abrahams Accord as well. So all these things that he did for us, our 401s were expanding. You could fill up your gas tank and go out for a movie on Friday night. But we're not seeing that right now. And so the one and only thing I'll acknowledge here is that uh, the, this Fox host was correct in the sense that the perception is, again, if you look at the polling, that the economy is not doing well, right? Even though if you dig deeper into the polling, what you find is that respondents say, most of them say, well, my personal financial situation is either good or okay. I'm just worried about everybody else. Like, I, I, I get the impression that everybody else is suffering financially, right? And then what economic positivity they do experience, they don't draw a clear association between that and the policies of President Biden and the Democratic Party in general. So there is truth to the idea that the polls are not in Biden's favor with respect to the economy. And that is something we have to rigorously fight against because, yes, the facts are on our side. But perception matters more and perception is reality. And right now, perception is against Biden on the economy. Everything else that host just said was nonsense. She talked about how Trump you know, presided over a thriving economy. Yeah, until the fourth year. He was president for four years, not three. They, they, they're they hoping you forget that. They're hoping you forget that somebody else was – or that, that he was president in 2020 and you're hoping that – or they're hoping that you think somebody else was in 2020 when the economy went into the toilet in large part because of Trump's mismanagement of the COVID pandemic. And again, we've talked about this. People would say, well, listen, you can't blame – you know, Trump for COVID. And it's like, well, listen, uh, we need to hold people to the same standard. If it was a Democrat in power, would you grade them on a curve? No. Well, then I'm not going to grade Trump on a curve because he didn't actually put his best foot forward with respect to COVID. So yeah, I do blame him in large part for the certainly the 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 fatalities associated with it, but yes, the economic fallout as well. Um, energy production, energy independence, we're, we're actually producing, you know, this is actually an argument against Biden from the left because, you know, we're actually our, our, uh, our production of natural uh, or fossil fuels is higher now under Biden than it ever was under Donald Trump. Right. They talk about gas prices. Well, presidents don't control gas prices for better or worse, Republican or Democrat. If Biden controlled gas prices, he'd want them as low as possible because he doesn't want to be blamed for high gas prices. So, guys, if he had the power to do it, why wouldn't he wave his wand and make it a nickel per gallon? And for that matter, when Trump was president, why didn't he wave that magic wand? that you clearly think presidents have to make it a nickel per gallon. It's because presidents don't control gas prices. They never have. They never will. She talks about other things like the Abraham Accords, which they overstate the importance of that. You know, Jared Kushner and others say, oh, it brought peace in the Middle East. No, it did not. As a matter of fact, you could argue that not only did it merely, um, you know, uh, formalize a de facto normalized set of relations among Middle Eastern countries, you could easily make the argument that it exacerbated tensions in the Middle East and, and certainly between uh, Palestine and Israel by moving the embassy to Jerusalem. But that's, again, neither here nor there. But the bottom line is they constantly like make it seem like Trump is single-handedly responsible for a really great economy that was there for three years but not the fourth. But the reality is that's not true because most of the great economic trends that Donald Trump enjoyed during his presidency, at least the first three years – were trends that he'd inherited from Obama, 
But don't tell Fox that because they believe otherwise. Look how long it took President Trump to turn the country around after Obama's miserable uh, economic state. The same thing's going to be said about Biden. That's insane. That's absolutely nuts. As Brian Tyler Cohen, um, a much bigger progressive commentator than me, and but I've also made this point in other videos, as he pointed out, every good economic trend that happened under Trump started under Obama. Trump then wrecked it with his disastrous COVID response and Biden fixed it, 100%. Look at the unemployment rate and the graphs, it started to trend downwards. We started to see consistently low and low and lower unemployment rate continued under Donald Trump and then skyrocketed due to his mismanagement of COVID. He inherited that positive trend from Obama. You look at middle class income. Again, you start to see it rise under um, President Obama. Um, Donald Trump doesn't get all the credit for that. Uh, U.S. stock market, right? This is the one that Trump values above all else because he's a billionaire. It's actually, I would argue, the least important major macroeconomic indicator. But again, that trended in the right direction uh, under Obama as well. And then manufacturing output, again, uh, started to trend uh, under positively under Obama before it tanked under Trump. Now, again, that's the difference. Obama inherited a disastrous economy from President Bush and had to spend two terms getting us out of that hole. He handed off a great economy to Donald Trump. Donald Trump wrecked it in three years. And then President Biden, like Obama before him, and then like Clinton before Obama, had to correct the mistakes made under a Republican administration. 10 of the, last, of the last 11 recessions began under Republican presidents. The, the consensus and the historical analysis are quite clear. Whether you give them all the credit or not, whether you think it's sheer coincidence, it is a fact that the economy performs better consistently when Democrats are in power, which brings us back to 2024. This is good news, folks, but there's still much more work to be done. Right, we we got to make sure that the economy and economic trends continue to trend in the correct direction. Um, we have to get Democrats reelected, so it's much more likely that those trends continue in the correct tra- uh, direction. Because as we know, Republicans tend to ruin good economies, at least when they're in power. But we also have to persuasively convey the facts to people. It's not enough to have the facts on our side. It's not enough to be right. It's not enough to have the good news. We have to share the good news. We have to proselytize in a way. And that's what we face as we head into this election, right? We're now in the election year. It is 2024, baby, and it's time for us to fire on all cylinders and spread the good news when and where we can. Let me know what you think in the comments.